Good evening, folks, and welcome to another episode of the Decameron Film Festival. This is day number three. Uh, the first two days we did two films, two guests, two films per day, uh, but now we're going to do one per day. We can't keep it up with uh, two films, two guests, two episodes. It's a bit too much, uh, if, especially if you're going to watch the films beforehand. So uh, make sure to check out decameronfilmfestival.com as well because that's where you'll find the schedule. And uh, uh, so you can watch all the films beforehand. Uh, we have about 30 guests uh, talking about 30 films. So we're going to keep going. We started two days ago. We're going to keep going until mid end November. And we're still adding to the timetable. So make sure to go and check that out. Uh, I just want to say before we start also that I had some trouble uploading uh, the Woodlanders episode last night, some technical issues, but now I figured it out. So now it is available in uh, the Odyssey archive or on Odyssey in the Odyssey channel. As usual, you can send questions and comments and super chats through Odyssey. And if you want to help us make sure that this is a success also financially, to help us make sure that it works out financially, you can go to the website and go to the donate page. You can send donations through Odyssey, through crypto, through uh, bank transfer, PO box. You'll find all the information on the website and on the donate page. And now I want to welcome today's guest from Portugal, Duarte Branquino. He is a uh, academic. He's a historian. He is a journalist, editor. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, do, do you want to introduce yourself, tell the audience a little bit about uh, your background and what you do before we get into the film? Uh, hi, Prodi. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for the invitation, Prodi. Uh, okay. Well, I, I think that the Cameron Festival was a, a great idea of yours, and I'm happy that it, it goes on beyond COVID and when it, uh, when it started. Um, well, for those who don't know me, uh, well, some of you do from, well, in Portugal, obviously, but also in France and other countries. Uh, well, our friend Martin Lichtmetz <laughs> knows, knows me also. Uh, well, I, I was a journalist for, for some years. I was the, the editor of a weekly, a Portuguese weekly newspaper for uh, five years. Uh, I now write articles and translate articles for several magazines. And uh, I was also the author of two books. Well, so I, I and I, I, you, at the beginning in the newspaper, uh, I used to write about uh, films, actually. So it's mm -hmm. one of the things I love. And when you invited me, Frodi, of course, I had to say yes. Well, and, thank you so well, much. And I, well, and I have to say about, I don't know if, if I can jump into the, the film that we're going to talk about. Absolutely. So. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to show it on the screen here. We're ah, going to okay. talk about a French film, Le Crabe Tambour from 1977. Uh, okay. I just watched it today, actually. So uh, oh. please <laughs> tell, tell us why you picked this film. Yeah, well, uh, I was telling about the film and why uh, was I... Uh, going to, to speak about this film to some friends and um, uh, well uh, I was a bit amazed that some of my friends uh, older friends uh, actually did, didn't like the film well at least two of them I, I was a bit uh, it was a bit strange for me but well I hope after our talk <laughs> they will watch it again and then like it but um, I think that um, this is, I, I, let, let me do so, uh, like a, a genealogy uh, uh, of my crab tambour or my drummer crab. We'll call it like this because we're speaking in English. Yeah. Um, well, uh, actually, uh, of course, I, I'm now 50. So when I was born, Portugal still had an empire. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I want to, th this is important because it, it was part of my childhood and uh, my teen years. It was still very present. Of course, I have uh, very close relatives, my, my uncle, my, my grandparents, they, they, they were in Africa in the, in the war. So the war, the empire was still very, very close. 
Um, and and of course, France uh, had uh, a quite a similar uh, history with his <clears throat> with the French Empire and and actually uh, some of the, the the French way of war in Algeria uh, mainly uh, was a was a big influence in the Portuguese way of war than in Angola, Mozambique, and other places. Uh, first of all, because it was very near, and then because French was the language that uh, officer, Portuguese officers and the, the, the Portuguese elite spoke at the time, like most Southern Europe. It wasn't, it wasn't English. I remember my grandfather who was a Navy officer. He did speak English because it was uh, uh, usually in the Navy they would speak English. But generally, the, the language, pe educated people uh, spoke the foreign language, pe educated Portuguese in the gener generation of my parents spoke was French. So there mm. was a big French influence. And I remember when we, uh, when you invited me and we spoke about, oh, and we, you asked me what, uh, about which, uh, which film do you want to talk about? And I, uh, mm -hmm. we, well, I actually sent you uh, a bunch of films, some mm -hmm. film. Uh, and there was a Portuguese film that I, I was very hesitant I, uh, between that uh, non uh, or, and this film. But, but I eventually chose this one because I, I really, really love... Um, uh, Le Crap Tambour. Uh, for me, it's the, the best uh, Pierre Chandorfer uh, movie. Uh, uh, better, even, even better than the 317th section, which is a great, great movie. The sec his second best for me. And I think um, I, I chose this film mainly because it, 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 it has two uh, uh, main subjects. Uh, the end of an empire, the end, the the the, big, the end of a world, and the beginning of another, mm -hmm. and at the same time, uh, the the main subject, friendship, friendship between men, and this is, uh, it's uh, I think it's a very very strong subject. Well, nowadays with these, well, this you know with these uh, mental illness like uh, gender fluid and all this crazy. Um, uh, crazy delusional theories. Uh, mm -hmm. It's actually, uh, um, I believe, it's uh, even considered uh, dangerous or toxic, as they say. But mm -hmm. it's it's uh, it's something uh, simple, straightforward, but sometimes very complicated. And I think it's exactly um, about this this kind of relationship that uh, this film is about. So, uh, Frody, uh, <laughs> please, please interrupt me. So you, know I, you know I won't shut up. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, I, I think that's a good introduction. It's, it's interesting you said that uh, uh, in, in um, Portugal and perhaps in general in Southern Europe, if people yeah. were educated, uh, they would speak French, for example. They would have French as a second language. Not now, in my generation, course, uh, the generation before, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But uh, now, of course, English is the lingua franca everywhere. But uh, but in Northern Europe, it would have been German. So that if people were <laughs> academics, for example, before the Second World War, um, they would write uh, academic uh, essays and so on in German rather than in English as they do now. So it's it's also that's also a difference between a, the end of an old world and the beginning of a new. Yeah, exactly. That now it's it's a part of that whole transition. So that's an interesting point to begin with. The actually uh, maybe we 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 can. Uh, the, let me tell you something. Well, well you watch the 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 film uh, today and I rewatch mm -hmm. it for the, I don't know, millionth time uh, <laughs> yesterday. And I uh -huh. really, really love this film. And, every, and it looks like, well, like with other films, each time I watch it, I, I, I discover something new. Something I, 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 yeah, I saw this, but not like this. You know? and, and well, I was watching it uh, yesterday and and I thought at the beginning of the film, the the doctor, the, the 
which is played by Claude Riche, a great French actor. He, mm -hmm. he, he starts his uh, monologue saying, well, I'm 50. And I said, come on, this was my, this was, <laughs> I, I didn't remember it. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's a sign, I don't know, from the gods or something, um, yeah. from the gods of the sea, I, can, I imagine, uh, telling me, you know, what, now you, you were a kid when you watched this and now you're 50. And, it, and this, uh, well, I'm playing with it, but it plays a role. Um, what do I mean by this? Um, when I first watched this film, I was very curious about, of course, I was from a generation that grew up uh, with um, American films, of course, uh, mm. and Vietnam films. Uh, yeah. I watched I, I loved war movies and I, I, I watched so many um, uh, films about Vietnam, uh, some of them very good, but most of them, well, those kind of entertainment movie that has, uh, has little to do with war and to do this manly uh, world of war and uh, the military, uh, and soldiering. So, um, mm. and at the same time, there were no Portuguese films about the war, or the ones that were that existed were very, very strange. Mm -hmm. And not. And when I discovered, well, of course, and one of the films I really loved and still do uh, was a Coppola's Apocalypse Now, of course. Yeah, and I, I thought they, about the same thing when I saw yeah, this film well, because it has some themes in common. They're looking for well, a man. They're in Vietnam. They're kind of, they're on a boat. There are many, and it's almost like mythological as well. So it's it's uh, very exactly, similar. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, Frodi, uh, I know, and I I I I want to start with uh, this uh, Apocalypse Now reference because I'm sure many of the the, the our listeners and viewers are, that watched the, the film before uh, our talk uh, thought the same thing. And, and, uh, and as they watched it, they, they, they thought, well, uh, isn't this from Apocalypse Now? Well, it's exactly the other way around. Yeah. So, yeah, as it usually uh, happens, uh, there are, of course, there are good things, uh, cultural movies and books that come from America, but most of the times they they are uh, remakes or re uh, something inspired by uh another film uh, another book and it, but in in this film apocalypse now i discovered um i watched it very young and i discovered mm -hmm. many things of course at the time there were no internet today it's, it's quite easy to uh of course people who never heard of uh, they saw who's this guy uh Duarte, who's this the director Schandorfer? Uh, uh, I just type it and Google just gives me a, a, a whole lot of information, which is great. But at the time, I I, I thought, wow, what what is this? Ooh, Heart of Darkness? I never I, I never have even heard of Conrad. I started reading Conrad because of of Coppola and his Apocalypse Now, mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, sometime later, a documentary film by Coppola's wife um, came out called Hearts of Darkness, which mm -hmm. is the making of Apocalypse Now, which is a great movie. And, and it's the, it was the first time um, I saw the French plantation scene. Do you remember that? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's in the so, it's in the extended version. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, but the first time the public watched it was in this documentary film, and mm. I, I was uh, I was truly amazed, and I thought, wow, this is this is some this is one of the films I love the most, and it's actually and there's still things I haven't seen. So, and in this, um, why am I bringing this up? So uh, I know I talk too much, but. Um, uh, there's a scene in um, the Apocalypse Now French plantation, uh, one of the dialogues, uh, where which we know as the the egg scene. Do you remember that? Well, he 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 breaks an egg in his hand mm -hmm. and said, "You know what's like in in, in the China." Well, he breaks the egg and he says, "The white leaves and the yellow stays." 
Well, <laughs> this is actually the exact same scene from one of uh, Schandorfer's movies, uh, the 317th um, section or platoon in English. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, so it's exactly the same thing. So there are many uh, Schondorfer uh, references in... Oh, so you're... Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah I just show it on, on the yeah. screen oh, since perfect. we're talking about it, yeah. Uh, so there are many uh, references. And uh, of course, you, 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 you talked about the river sins. Well, mm -hmm. those are... Uh, actually, we think sometimes we, we, we almost... Of course, men, most of us watched Apocalypse Now before this film. So it, it's like uh, seeing part three <laughs> before part one. So it's a bit strange. Yeah. But there, uh, there are um, other references. Uh, there's also, uh, there was another influence, uh, very uh, Schondorf influence in Apocalypse Now, which was the, um, how it's called, one, one of Schondorf's book, um, Farewell to the King, which uh, the, there's also a film by John Milius with uh, with Nick Nolte. Uh, it's 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 again uh, a European, well, a Western in this case, in the middle of the jungle with the natives. It's well, uh, I think we I think we can see uh, Colonel Kurtz or Marilyn Brando, and 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 also the the drummer crab which um, Jacques Perrin plays beautifully. And mm -hmm. I think even because uh, uh, Brando's Colonel Kurtz uh, is a bit dark. And if when we watch the drummer crab, uh, the drummer crab, he's actually, uh, he's, he's not, he's actually funny sometimes. He, 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 mm. like, he laughs at life. He's an adventurer. He he he's a challenger. He 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 looks. Everyone looks up to him. He um, but at the same it's, it's at the same time with uh, with with admiration. But other times, well, he's just crazy. He's a bit crazy, or uh, or even oh, he's now he's playing the officer. Remember the scene where he he. He tells to uh, to the officer in the other boat, saying, "What is that? The, this pirate flag? Just take it off. We're not, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, we're not headhunters. Just clean it off the the uh, the ship, the, the the boat." So he 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 looks like an adventurer, a free spirit, but at the same time, he was a military man that um, followed. Um, protocol and uh, the military this is military code so it's uh, it's not it's not a figure it's not a monolithic figure it's what I mm -hmm. uh, want to say well a little Brody, I don't know if you want to interrupt me please no I no I, absolutely no go ahead no I, I, I yeah of course I mean I I, uh, I I noticed those references or those similarities it's it's uh, there are so many, many tracks we could go down with this film, but uh, I'll let you take it away because yeah, even, probably even the, uh, uh, you were you were speaking about um, a mythological uh, aspect, and I yeah. remember the, one of the things that struck me was the mist in the river, which kind mm -hmm. of looked like it's like a, a passage to another world. It's a and it. Yeah, yeah. It's and that trip on the that, boat no. uh, through the river is sort of it's 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 a, it's on a river, but it's also a spiritual trip to somewhere right, else. Exactly. You go deep into the unknown, really, and 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 there's a same same sense of uh, what's going on here. Yeah. So, well, um, the, going back to the to the first scene where the doctor says he's fifty, there's a, it's actually very curious because it, it's. It was also um, with this film that I first knew about uh, Hiro Onoda, the Japanese soldier that was for I don't know almost thirty years in a Philippine jungle, uh, mm -hmm. believing that the war wasn't over. And this scene is, is just brilliant because he's watching TV and he 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 sees Onoda and. He, he, of course, this happens in 1974, 
mm-hmm. uh, and um, he sing another um, uh, well av- arriving uh, I don't know I don't know to an airport and mm-hmm. of course getting uh, uh, getting back to civilization if we if you we want to put it this way mm-hmm. and the, the the next scene is a scene in Rio de Janeiro with a Brazilian carnival so and he he then looks at it, looks away and gets up and goes away. So it's like his attention goes to the soldier, but not to the the, the dancing Brazilian girls uh, um, in the carnival uh, party. So it, it, it kind of uh, tells you what you're going to see. You're going to yeah. see uh, yeah, a military, men's world, uh, uh, where you, yeah, where discipline uh, comes first. So it's uh, and, think- and and that character he uh, he is kind of disgusted by civilian life in a way because it's trivial. Yeah. He wants he wants because the whole film is existential. Okay, what have I done with my life? Exactly. Uh, so I guess that's also a part of he's fifty. And it's sort of a midlife crisis in a sense that he questions, okay, what have I devoted my life to? What have I done with my talents? And so there's a difference between the soldier and the carnival, the trivial and the serious, right? And a lot of, have I done the right thing? Uh, Yeah. Have I done what I should have done? So it's, uh, it's quite, uh, it's existentialist as you put it. Yeah. Yeah. No, without a doubt. Uh, well, but uh, about another, I, uh, I should, yeah, I don't know, many, maybe you watched it. There was a, a film, I actually we have a note here. Uh, it's called Another 10,000 Nights in the Jungle. It's a 2021 film by mm-hmm. uh, Arthur Arari, uh, which I watched, I don't know, a year or two ago. And it, it's, a very, it's a good film. Uh, I would recommend it. About Onoda mm-hmm. and his, uh, well, his comrades it's it's well done it's not it's not it's of course a recreation a fictional recreation it's it's very well done mm-hmm. um uh at the same time uh the the i was telling the the most important thing is i think in this movie it's the friendship uh thing um mm-hmm. and there are two of course we can see the three main characters uh, the drummer crab, of course, it's the, the central figure. Mm-hmm. Uh, then the doctor, which, which is in a way the the, the drummer crab's best friend, because uh, um, even the captain says at some time, well, he told me, he once told me that he had two. He, the drummer crab, mm-hmm. had two friends: his cat and you, the doctor. <laughs> so. So it's it's kind of a uh, I think the 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 captain is in a position saying like mm, yeah I want like a, a bit of uh, this a bit of jealousy almost like I wanted to be his best friend and you are that but at the same time not in a feminine way like oh you, you're no good I'm his best friend no you're his best friend and and you and maybe and I think you actually deserve it and. It's okay like this. It's not wrong. Uh, at the same time, the the doctor is sometimes uh, a bit naive. Uh, mm-hmm. Remember the the chef always told. Uh, he tells you sometimes. Well, come on, didn't you notice? You said, oh, oh, uh, Wilsdorf. Do you know him? He's all, he's teasing him. Oh, do you know him? Of course, he was listening to you. That's what, he wants to meet him. He he wants to. Uh, to see him one last time and the doctor just goes oh yeah oh really mm-hmm. he's he's really naive he's not playing an act uh, it's, maybe because he's really his best friend and the the they 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 got along always so it's quite interesting the the different relationship between these three men uh that are friends of course but uh yeah brothers in arms also which is uh, very uh, very very strong the um, 
the, one of the scenes I, I, I'm remembering, I, I, I had a note, uh, I had a note here that's, that goes, uh, that says, oh, oh, here, this is the, yeah. Okay, so this is the captain, the captain sitting down and the doctor standing, standing up. Uh, but do you remember that? Oh, and yeah, uh, there's an aspect I, uh, I almost forgot. Uh, I really do love uh, films in in ships. Yeah. Uh, well, like and and, boat, and, for example. But of course, and and also what, well, I love this film, uh, Master and Commander, mm -hmm. Peter Weir, Master and Commander. And actually, there's a, there's also a, a connection because Master and Commander is based on the. I, I believe the three first novels of um, of the series of the same name um, by Patrick O'Brien, and Patrick O'Brien was actually the translator to English of the Drummer Crab, the Schondorfer's book, The Drummer mm. Crab, and it's called like pa Paths of the Sea or something like this, uh, which is which is quite curious. Um, uh, oh, and there's also, uh, I don't yeah, know. Paths of the Sea, yeah. Paths of the Sea, okay, thanks. So it's, 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 yeah, I think it's, uh, well, it's nice to, to discover these uh, small uh, aspects, these the small coincidences, small connections, I don't know how to call them, um, from things that we love, movies, books, uh, actors, and see, they're all connected in a way. So, at the same time, there's there's one very important uh, thing about this story, the book, and, and then the the film, which is uh, it's based on a true story, the true story of Pierre Guillaume, which was a navy, a French navy officer, and has an incredible life story. So, it's. Uh, I don't know if the real story is uh, how different it is from the from the film. So, uh, of course, the film is is fictionalized. But and one of the things that we can say is that Pierre Guillaume was uh, was happy with this film and this story because mm -hmm. he was um, uh, he I, I believe he he actually helped in the production of the film. But he he appears on the film in one of the scenes, uh, the court scene, one of the, the I don't know one of the lawyers, uh, uh, I think, uh, is played by Pierre Guillaume, which well, I think it's almost unrecognizable, oh, really? uh, <laughs> and it's it's curious because the the uh, it was it was his life story. Oh, now this image, come on. Now, it's a great scene, and of course, if you watch Apocalypse Now, you you'll recognize the the, the yeah. Hmm. The uh, uh, oh, but I was telling you, I had a, a, a small note here saying uh, very French, and this is about the 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 pastis. You remember that scene? There's a scene yeah. where he's going. He, they are arriving in, in the middle of nowhere in the in the, the, the the river, which a scene which uh, Coppola um, copies uh, in Apocalypse Now. And they're arriving mm -hmm. on a, a river bank, and there uh, we, you can hear shots fire. Then you know there's there's a mess, and they're saying, "Oh, I don't know." Maybe, there's that that horrible pastis again, and you know the French <laughs> and the French, especially in the military, it was very common that the, it was their drink. And when they arrive there, he says, "Oh, let me try it." And he tries it and he said, "Oh, it's horrible. It's still horrible." And he, said, he gives it to to his comrade. Oh, come on, what do you think? Mm, it it's not good. It's it's not good. And he said, "Oh, but we did it. It's it's." It's a, um, it's kind of a manly, friendly thing. Like, oh, oh, you're horrible food again. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of um, picking up on one another. It's uh, uh, oh, and another uh, another Conrad reference, which is uh, I don't know. But nowadays, uh, it's 
completely politically uh, <laughs> incorrect is the um, well the captain is reading the doctors you can see that the, the one of the books that uh, the, the um, after he he takes care of a a, a black sailor which is remember that the the, the black sailor said oh he he asks his patient oh, but where are you from he said oh i'm french now now i'm french mm -hmm. I'm a political refugee, so <laughs> watching this today is quite funny uh, with everything that's happening. And and when, and then the doctor goes uh, to have dinner with the captain, and the captain is uh, is reading the um, the nigger of the Narcissus, uh, the Conrad book, which of course uh, today has a, a different title, of course, because of the word nigger. But uh, of course, it wasn't it wasn't against anyone. Uh, but it's curious because it makes you see that at, at the time it, uh, Schondorfer makes this reference, hoping and um, not hoping, knowing that well, people who who will watch this film will will recognize this reference, will know what I'm talking about, will know yeah. that the nigger uh, of the narcissist was. Uh, was sick and people didn't believe him and he, he was in a ship and of course you can see that black man saying oh uh, yeah now i'm french and people looking a bit uh, away like not not believing in in the story so it's, <laughs> not really yeah <laughs> yeah so it's quite uh, um um but of course uh, uh, as I said in the beginning, there's also the, um, the the main theme of the end of an empire, and this is mm -hmm. something that I uh, lived through my, of course, through an older generation, and mm -hmm. and it's curious how people uh, react differently. Of course, I I know people that fought in the war and. And after that, said, uh, well, the world has changed, so I'll, I'll move on. And yeah, I don't want to go back to the past. I just, uh, I'll just carry on. And this is the new world, and it's better or it's worse, but it is what it is. And of course, there are people that still um, they miss. Uh, I don't know. He, their life in the empire in Angola, or in this case, in the French empire in Indochina so much that they still live there and their life is just miserable. So it's a bit like, uh, it's, well, this isn't, it's, this even can, this can, this uh, feeling can even happen in the same country. Uh, you know, the, the, um, it's, it's almost like the the nostalgia feeling, you know, the the people who, who lived in Eastern Germany, mm -hmm. who, who, who hated communism, hated the regime, mm -hmm. they wanted a, a united Germany. But after that, said, "Oh, shit! I miss I miss my old country." In a strange way, maybe yeah. in 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 Portugal, even people that were against. Uh, the regime, or even doubted if uh, I don't know the, the colonial rule was okay or wasn't. Uh, colonial is a, 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 a well in English, uh, it's okay, but in Portugal, if you say, for instance, colonial war, uh, mm -hmm. you everyone will know you're left wing. So uh, if you mm. say overseas war, guerra do ultramar, you you're immediately uh, labeled right wing. So it's, mm. and people, uh, I have some friends, uh, history professors that came up with the term um, African wars. So it's quite, so. That's the neutral term? It, 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 yeah, like it, it, this is neutral. It's so not yeah. left or right. But of course the left will say, no, this is a kind of, um, uh, they're washing the, the Portugal, Portugal whitewashing the, whitewashing the, the, the war uh, and the, the colonial rule and everything so yeah it's <laughs> it's always <laughs> whatever you do it's wrong remember that Freud um, 
but but the, the, remember, there's a scene that I I uh, I also can relate to. There's a scene when the doctor comes back to Paris, and there's one of the old uh, one of the old uh, officers finds him in the street and says, "Oh, doctor, how are you?" And he's he's pretty drunk, and <laughs> they're having a know, drink together. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he's in a, an Asian restaurant, like, like trying to relive uh, his uh, Indochina uh, <laughs> days. So yeah. Quite, and I remember when I was in the newspaper, I had a, um, I had a, a friend, an Italian friend who 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 was an intern in, in the newspaper. He studied in Lisbon. He and he was an intern for some time in the newspaper, and. When we closed the, the, the weekly edition, we went for dinner quite late, and we went to uh, one of the well, one of the Lisbon's neighborhood where you have restaurants open till till well late. And those and uh, the the neighborhood where I grew up, and there was always people that knew him, did knew me. Oh hi, how are you? Oh, uh, and it was always one of uh, Bit of a, uh, an old guy, uh, always drinking too much, and say, "Oh, how are you?" And he actually fought in the war. And every time he saw me, he said, "Oh, do you have last week's newspaper?" Because he he didn't want it to buy it. So mm -hmm. said, yes, I do. Come on, and uh, what do you want? So, a beer or something? And this, uh, my my Italian friend said, "Wow, this is incredible." Because I don't have that. I I don't have. Uh, well, I can't uh, in my city. I, I, I don't go to the, the to the restaurant to the bar downstairs and, and mm -hmm. find an, uh, a war veteran. So, and it's quite strange because one thing is to see war veterans in beautiful and epic books and in epic films. Another thing is to see them uh, like real people and in, in the cafe downstairs with with uh, destroyed lives or or worse. Yeah. Uh, denying everything and saying, "Oh, it was just stupid. I didn't know what I was doing." So it's it's kind of uh, you know I, I always like to to because fiction reflects reality and reality reflects fiction. So there's always a connection, and it's very very important to me. I I, I always like to 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 know both sides, uh, a bit like. You have to live something to write about it, or maybe you write something that you would like to live. So it's it's always a, a, a there's always a um, uh, this kind of relation. So and this scene where he, he finds it uh, finds this uh, old uh, comrade and he tells him, "Listen, um, yeah, well, well, we have to and." Uh, 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 and at one point, the doctor goes, well, you know, at some time, you, you will have to leave uh, Indochina. So we as, like, we as friends, but we as us also. Like, it, it mm. has to come out of us. Uh, it's, yeah. I don't know, that, um, that moment, um, it's, it's quite touching at the same time, because it's, there are people that, well, they, they can begin a new life and they can start over. Uh, mm -hmm. There are people that just can't. And and maybe even people that were heroes and actually fought for their country and had ideals and everything. And But outside this uh, military structure or this political structure or this uh, regime, they just don't work. They just, yeah. They just, there's the, there's I, the American film, uh, The Hurt Locker. Oh yeah, yeah, great film. Yeah, 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 which is great which is also great. I think it's it's from, from Yo, the, Iraq. The, uh, yeah, the and supermarket scene. It's supermarket yeah, it's, scene. Yeah, it's, a, it's he has a meaningful life when he's in war. It's stressful and yeah. so on. But when he gets home, it's like okay, everything is what, completely. Yeah, what's now. this? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like I'm not living. Yeah. 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 yeah uh, th th yeah. There's a there's a lot to that about, especially the modern world. More and more of this of that kind of life. Okay, we're just like in an institution almost, 
this is not uh, real life. Uh, so it's, uh, it's uh, relatable. It's a relatable thing as well. It is, it is. The, um, and just let me check my notes because I, uh, I don't know. Uh, Ah, there's another, yeah, I had a note right here. There's another thing that uh, the, the captain says at some point to the, um, to, to the doctor. Um, when the doctor realizes he, he has, um, that he's ill and that he's going to die. So, and he's asking for, a, I don't know, some kind of medicine that the doctor says, well, this won't do anything. Uh, <laughs> and, and he said, well, uh, it doesn't matter. Oh, well, someone will take my place. And he said, yeah. what matters is the boat. This, yeah. this, I love that. I love that line. What matters is the boat. And I, and of course I see this uh, as a symbol of, uh, of the fatherland. Of, yeah country of, uh, of our people it's like we as a whole uh, are more than than just us yeah, yeah. and this is a and this is a message that in in our times that in the times of individual individualism the like i i iphone ipad i everything and yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, and the captain, he lives a, a life of full devotion to the boat, yeah. to the ship. There, there's one scene where uh, where the drummer Crab is on trial and he says, didn't you say that you were going to resign? And he said, yeah, I, I tried, but I couldn't. He tried to resign from his duty, but he couldn't do it. He couldn't, yeah. couldn't which live outside actually, of that yeah. structure. Which is actually, yeah, it's a brilliant scene because it's, it's one of those, yeah, it's one of those man talks, like, I said mm. I would do this. It, it's mm. actually, uh, I have to agree with women when they say men never grow up. But yeah, in some mm. way we don't. Because it's like when we're kids. I say, Frodi, listen to me. Yeah, I'm going to, to jump from that tree. And I said, well, mm. you said you'd, you would do that and you didn't. So I'm not speaking to you anymore. So it's, yeah, it's yeah. Like, it begins there and it never ends. And he says, mm -hmm. well, of course, the drummer crab... Um, uh, quits the navy and well, and there's a political thing also. We'll get into that. But the captain says, "Well, uh, at the at that point, we don't know." So he said, uh, "You you said that, but you you didn't do it. Mm -hmm. What kind of a man are you? What kind of, a, <laughs> of an officer are you?" But of course, we eventually uh, know that he tried to, but he couldn't. So it's mm. actually who is. Who is right in this? Uh, yeah, in this feud, it's it's interesting. It's it's existentialist, as you put it. So mm -hmm. it's yeah, and uh, and, oh, and at the same time, there's a, there's also a line by the by the doctor when he, he one of the things when he's speaking to the drummer crab, uh, and the drummer crab tells him, well. Uh, well, I, well, I was afraid, and he said, "Wow, the drummer crab was afraid." But I thought he was the hero. The he wasn't afraid of anything. He was the, the adventurer, and it's it's kind of it's like a reminder that uh, we're all cowards in some way. We have to fight it. So even the most even the bravest person we know uh, has moments of. I don't know weakness or or, or cowardice even. So it's it's kind of a, um, um, and of course uh, uh, with this uh, existentialist dilemma, uh, which is the captain's dilemma, uh, mm -hmm. he actually says, "Yeah, what have I done with my life?" Because mm -hmm. for the captain, he did everything right as. As an officer, as a military, he did everything right. So it's it's very, how have you used your talents or something like that? It's from the Bible, right? Oh yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's, he actually has uh, Bible references. He, it's it's very very interesting, and 
He has done everything right, but he's still not happy about he's it. Happy, yeah. He, he, he's also he's always asking, well, what should I've done differently, and should I? Uh, I think he he of course we we always watch other people, friends, and people we look up to, and say maybe I should be more like him. So, mm. which, which is always yeah, which is always strange because you should be yourself, but of course you. You grow, you grow up watching your parents, your colleagues, your friends. So it's, of course, you you look up to someone and you you'll try to imitate him in in a way. Mm. Of course, there are ridiculous forms of that, but but not not all. And yeah. I think the captain had, like, yeah, go ahead. Had that, yeah, had that with the drummer crab, of course. So it's. Yeah, because the drummer crab is he he's a free man in a sense he follows his own heart he does what he wants to do and the captain he is devoted to the system he is a system man he is completely devoted to the system whereas the drummer crab is more uh of an individual a free individual free spirit uh sort of an adventurer in a sense he just follows what he wants to do he has he has more of um these sort of spontaneous uh, uh or whims really that he follows yeah, but at the same time, the captain. Yeah, this is true. But at the same time, the captain, he's a, he's a, he. Of course, he serves his country. He serves the French Navy. He serves his men, on his command, of course. But mm -hmm. at the same time, he's a very lonely man. He lives with himself, and yeah. and the drummer crab who looks like the lonely adventurer. He's always, even he when he's he he's made prisoner by the by these Bedouins, and he he at the same time they put him in chain. At the beginning they put him in chains, but quite quickly he 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 becomes he starts uh, training them, learn, mm. uh, teaching them how to shoot properly and helping them fight others. So it's he needs. At the same time, the lonely adventure needs his men, and oh, and, and it, there's also a, a political um, aspect of the film that, of course, at the time, uh, it was obvious for uh, well for the French uh, audience, of course, but even to European audiences. But nowadays, I don't know people who, uh, and I think younger people who watch the film so. What are they talking about? Because uh, there's one question, because, of course, the drummer crab, which Pierre Guillaume, the real character, did, he quits the Navy and he joins the military that did the, um, the, the general's coup, the, the general's putsch in Algiers. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the French military, they, they wanted to keep Algeria French. So this was, this was quite, uh, and he ends up uh, accused of treason. And yeah, of course. And there's that scene where the captain speaks, uh, that I believe it's the last time they speak to one another, uh, that speaks with, uh, with the, the drummer crab. And of course, we can't hear it. But we imagine that some uh, something like, well, we did, you didn't do with, you didn't quit. But of course, the captain helped them, and we we get the idea that uh, it was because of the captain in his testimony that uh, the drummer crab wasn't well sentenced to death, uh, like somewhere. It's it's also the the scene that you mentioned or the 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 episode you mentioned where he is a prisoner uh by the african tribe there uh no. it's also sort of a politically incorrect uh aspect to it where he is the prisoner he's in chains but they immediately start seeing him as superior so yeah. they start looking up to him and basically worshiping him and that's sort of an old trope that for example the the white man who is adopted by an indian family and becomes sort of the leader or whatever i mean it's it's it it is a common theme in in fiction but that would not be permitted today that would be a big no no well, which which is the theme of the the 
uh, Farewell to the King, Schandorf's uh, film, and uh, the uh, the one of the the Rudyard Kipling's book also. So it's it's a recurring theme, as you told me. Yeah, yeah. So and and it's interesting that. Uh, at some time, the, the, and there's another character which is very, very interesting. The I don't know how you call it in English, which is the, the chef, that mm -hmm. the one who, who who tells all the 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 story, the, the funny stories, and he's always drinking and telling telling stories. And, and of course, he tells stories about Brittany, the the French region region of Brittany, which is very, very interesting. And he actually uses uh, wor uh, Breton words, so like um, to, to, uh, to say cheers and and speaking about that. Remember that the the priest that saw he tells the story about the priest that saw a sign in in the sky, and uh, yeah. well, maybe we shouldn't tell it so that people won't. But, which is a funny story and. Uh, some scenes after he said, you know, this this story sounds funny, but it isn't, because mm -hmm. the um, the people uh, well people abandoned the priest and he eventually died. So he was found dead. So it's not a funny story. It sounds funny, but it isn't. It's it's curious. It's very very and. It, it, it portrays the 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 the, listen, the the hard conditions in in Brittany, the, the mm -hmm. harsh life, but not in in a way that oh poor them. No, no, it's like listen, you know, these people lived in the he he says in the in the chin. Uh, he he has the 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 map of France with Brittany, and he said, yeah. "Listen, this is a chin of Britain. Everything, even Muhammad Ali can can punch it, and uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and it won't break." So it, it it's quite funny because he's saying they they they're hardened by the sea, so and the winter. So it's very very. Um, uh, and, oh no, and there's a, a an, another important thing when. Of course, they they they're on this ship, he, ship uh, heading to the um, to the North Atlantic to Newfoundland, and mm -hmm. and and they arrive to uh, Saint Pierre et Miquelon, which is uh, French territory. So, which mm -hmm. is like a reminder. It's another reminder of the empire. Because mm. they're in France, but they're in the other side of the Atlantic. It's it's still the new. It's the new old world. So it's it's quite uh, curious. And there's this. There's a scene quite. The it, it, it's in Saint Pierre and Miquelon. That's the the only feminine scene in the film. Do you remember when they they arrive there? And of course, he's a doctor and. We understand they don't have doctors there, and they call him to 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 see a patient. And there's mm -hmm. the a beautiful nurse which is mm -hmm. uh, waiting for the doctor, and, and then the nurse goes with uh, all the officers to uh, to a bar. Mm -hmm. And but it's uh, uh, again, it's a, a feminine figure, uh, almost like. Uh, um, I don't, how do I put it? Put it like a like in a Tolkien uh, book, mm -hmm. you know, like like a, uh, it's almost like a fairy because she doesn't oh. play an actual role. If it was a, a listen, a, a, an American movie, a, a commercial American movie, it would be the girl who would uh, ruin their friendship or who would be with one of them and then betray him well you know we know the story no it's just a figure that appears and it looks like it's like uh real life is in war at sea but mm -hmm. when you arrive uh to a port you have this like a fiery call this um this figure the mystical mm -hmm. figure feminine figure and at the same time uh of course you have drinking and you see that that scene where the uh, the, the old drunk is uh, recreating the Battle of the Atlantic with all the glasses. 
filling them up and breaking them. Say, oh, listen, and this was the, the I don't know, the, uh, this or the, the, oh, the Admiral Dunnett. Oh, kaput. And he's throwing the glasses and breaking everything. So, and people say, oh, come on, stop it. Oh, no, no, it's him. Like, he has this privilege. Like, the old yeah, yeah, yeah. of the bar has some privilege. And he's a veteran. He's an old him. man. They respect him. So, yeah, yeah, it's... Uh, and and actually that that figure the, the that character the, the the chef which is played by Jacques Dufilo uh, another uh, great uh, French actor which mm -hmm. which which uh, was all actually he was, actually was uh, pretty right wing himself he was a, a mm -hmm. royalist and yeah was <laughs> and saying things that nowadays would be unacceptable. And, and it's curious because he uses, uh, as I told you, a, a lot of uh, um, some terms in Breton. In, and I was checking what, what, did, what did they mean? Of course, the first times I, I watched the movie, I, I had no idea. But nowadays with internet, it's quite easy. And I, I, sometimes he's, at, at one time he says, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Gwynru, which I... Uh, looked up and means red wine so it's quite it's interesting he actually uh, he, he also speaks about the anku and i saw you 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 uploaded the the photo to to the guide to culture uh, telegram channel with mm -hmm. his the image saying the anku is the angel of death mm -hmm. which is a brilliant scene and of course this anku figure this angel of death is a, a, a originates in the Celtic mythology, and it's well, it's very present in Brittany, but it's also present in Wales and Cornwall. So it's it's a figure that, of course, comes from Celtic uh, mythology, but was assimilated to to Christian to Catholicism, uh, of course. So there was a syncretism as we call it um mm -hmm. and ah, another thing another interesting thing scene is when they're at this bar and we see and we think okay uh they cross the atlantic this also has a, a meaning they arrived somewhere because uh, we you have those scenes of the boat always um breaking the waves and you think okay they actually arrived somewhere but war is always present, remember, because they, they watch TV and TV is playing um, the Vietnam War that yeah. is ending at the time. So they're seeing Vietnamese children, people uh, uh, I don't know, killed or during bombings. And so it's a reminder that um, uh, the war is always there. Even if you cross the Atlantic, even if you're in a, a safe place, uh, war is, is on TV as it is in you. So that's my interpretation. Of it. And there's also an interesting aspect to that because they're in that bar and the old man has just told his stories about the ships and dropped the glasses and so on. And the Vietnam War uh, is the first war that was televised, that was yeah, 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 broadcast exactly. on TV. So that mostly, of course, from, from the previous wars, they would have relied on stories like that, from old men telling stories in bars and telling stories about what happened. But now, yeah. more and more in the modern world, now they can see the war on TV yeah, and it point. is more yeah. propagandized. Even that changed, yeah. Yeah. Oh and, there's actually, oh, and there's a scene at the bar. The chef, uh, he, he, he's, he's smoking. And he, when he leans uh, on the counter, he sees a fish, a codfish, mm -hmm. which, he, which is the name of the bar. And he, he, he puts the cigarette in, in the fish mouth. Uh, this is curious because this is a reference to, a to an earlier story when the drummer crab met uh, a very strange uh, tribe, uh, the tribe leader, and they... <laughs> which sided with the French, but well, which we can see uh, uh, another scene from which Coppola um, took references for the uh, for Colonel Kurtz' last standing. But 
the, uh, uh, when meeting this tribe, the, the, the drummer crab sees that they have all these uh, skulls and they, they, they light up cigarettes and put them in, the, the, this, uh, in these skulls, these dead, dead heads, that they, mm -hmm. the dead man's heads that they have. So it's, it's kind of a, a reminder of that. It's, uh, uh, and, oh, uh, no, just some, uh, yeah, I have a note here, just, just a, a trivial, uh, one more thing that I didn't know. Thanks, thank you, internet. Um, mm -hmm. There's one one scene where uh, there's a kid that uh, that's ma that, that makes fun of a. Uh, you remember that scene in Brittany where there's a guy, a drunk uh, guy, that ties himself up to to a cross, and mm -hmm. the next day there's some kids saying, "Oh yeah, oh no, oh na 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 na," like uh, teasing him. And one of these kids, it's actually the director's son, actually Pierre Chandor's son. So it's just a. Uh, uh, well, and then, and at the same time, there's a there's a sentence that uh, some people in our area, should, should, if you can put it this way, still use in France and other way, which is a which which comes from a um, French Foreign Legion song. There's a there's a phrase that they are always uh, saying to each other, which is um, farewell, old Europe. Uh, let the devil take you. So, which was, and this is curious because um, I I spoke well a few years ago. You know, I have many many French friends, and of mm -hmm. course we, we spoke about uh, this film and about this phrase. And I have some friends, Portuguese friends, that were in the French Foreign Legion, uh, and we we always spoke about this. And they, some of them told me, mm, you know, I, I don't like that phrase because it like, it, it's almost anti-European. Even I remember uh, I had a very good friend of mine, a French friend of mine, telling mm -hmm. me that he once interviewed uh, Jean Mabir, you know, the French author, uh, mm -hmm. and he told me, oh, I hate that phrase. And I said, wow, well, if, if, my, if my beer doesn't like it, oh, I'll have to rethink it. But <laughs> I, well, I don't interpret it in that way. So. And there's also yeah. another reference to, of course, Schandorfer, uh, I'm pronouncing it a bit uh, like a Germany, German way, is a, it's, Schandorfer is a German surname, because of mm. course Pierre Schandorfer is, is Alsatian. And the, the drummer crab, he made the drummer crab also Alsatian. His mm -hmm. surname name is Wilsdorf, which is clearly uh, a German surname. And it, it, there's another interesting thing, which... Um, there's a scene where they they see uh, Wildorf's brother, a photo of Wildorf's brother in the newspaper, and then his funeral. You remember that? And mm -hmm. Wild, because that Wildorf, the younger, the, the I'm sorry, the older brother, mm -hmm. he's one is one of the characters of the the three hundred and seventeenth platoon. Which one, it's one. He's one of the main characters. And we learn that he fought for the Germans during the Second World War, of course, because he was an Alsatian. But mm -hmm. then, and he's telling, well, uh, and Wildorf tells us, well, he was against the Germans, but he fought anyway. And after that, it's, it's curious. It's not because we have all we we have always these these. Um, readings of war where there are just two sides and people who are fighting believe in some cause and it's not always like that uh, mm -hmm. most of the time it, it is it has nothing to do with that and yeah I'm, i made that point many times uh, here on the channel and here on this show that uh, if you look at portrayals of the second world war uh, it is less moralized you, the closer you are to the actual war. So with people who were, I mean, if you look at films like the Iron Cross or something like Cross of Iron, yeah. something like that from the 60s or 70s, they could portray Germans in a much more relatable, normal way. Whereas the further you get away from the war, the more cartoonish and silly yeah, it becomes. Cartoonish is the right way. Yeah, it works. So, yeah. so it is... 
even for for the people who actually suffered through the war, they had more respect for the war than the people who came after, who just turned it into yeah. so, uh, this silly fairy tale. Yeah, yeah, the cartoonish. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's just stupid. Uh, but well, uh, uh, but it's curious that, uh, of course. Uh, uh, so the drummer crab's older brother, he fought in the Second World War, but then he fought in uh, Indochina, of course. Uh, after that, in in Algeria, so it's mm -hmm. uh, he was quite quite the fighter. So. And and we can see they all respect him in a way. Like you should, he yeah. did what we all should do: like fight for our uh, uh, do a life of fighting and war and die. <laughs> this, is, mm -hmm. this is the honorable way. It's, it's like it's almost like a samurai movie, the honorable yeah. way. But it is. It, it's the, the same. Uh, and of course, by the end of the film, uh, I think it's the scene I love the most it, it, because it's a it, it's a, a real, real uh, man talk. Mm -hmm. And when. I remember one before. I, uh, I remember one of uh, Arturo Perez Reverte, the Spanish writer. One of his books about um, the Spanish um, fighters in in the Napoleonic uh, Wars. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them, uh, they said. Well, of course, he portrays a Spanish officer which which has no respect. Uh, which doesn't respect Napoleon, but mm -hmm. which, but we, in the Russian campaign, he eventually meets Napoleon, and they don't speak. But w w what Revete tells us is they look at each other, and they speak without they communicate without speaking. And I said, mm -hmm. "Well, this is brilliant. Like I don't like you, but now we're side by side." So it's. It's that uh, feeling, and by the end of this film, it happens uh, some something similar. When when they finally arrive to the to, to the drummer crab's fishing boat, the of course he uh, the um, the doctor uh, first speaks to him, and it's oh how are you uh, oh okay uh, everything good, and after that the captain speaks with the drummer crab. And mm -hmm. um, and you remember the dialogue was okay. So there's nothing else to to say. Okay, so okay, so we'll we'll just leave it. And of course, the drummer crab then said, "Well, there's a message, a recurring message saying, oh, goodbye, goodbye.' Like the drummer crab, the lonely adventurer, the strong one." wanted mm -hmm. to keep on uh, to keep a conversation and the captain he we can see he made closure he 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 can now die is it's exactly what he's done like i have cancer i'm about to die i mm -hmm. this is my last trip uh and i make peace with uh, with my life which is very very powerful it's mm -hmm. a brilliant brilliant at an ending and no, and uh, by the end of uh, the, the the film, he actually returns to France. So this is the the meaning is, is all there. He 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 comes back from this this voyage. This uh, I would say like Celine's uh, voyage to the to the end of the not to, to the end of the night, but to the end of the the world, and mm -hmm. and back to to back to his uh to his fatherland to his to his country to die so it's it's a brilliant film oh and Frode, this is <laughs> this is a, a um a treat for you because mm -hmm. i found out that the, the 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 real name of the cat that plays the drummer crab uh cat is mm -hmm. mr lucifer <laughs> Come on, this is, uh, this, you can't make this up. It's, I, I, I have to tell this one to Frodi and well, to all, all, all the friends. So <laughs> we, we, uh, 
That's wonderful. Yeah, well, it's 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 a great film. I I'm I'm grateful that that you picked it because it gave me um, the motivation to see it, and and uh, I'm I'm glad I did. I'll definitely watch it again. Uh, I think it was a wonderful film uh, about three different characters viewing life from three different in different ways in this sort of existential crisis, um, and it's also uh, one thing we haven't mentioned is the visual aspect of the film the cinematography oh, yeah. is absolutely beautiful the beautiful. the the scenes filmed on the ocean and in the ice and it is just stunning i think it even won some prizes for that for the cinematography is absolutely stunning the and there's a, a, an interesting uh, uh, the light uh, uh, on the film uh, have you noticed when they're in the in the ship they mm -hmm. they it's very. It's always very dark and quite mysterious. And mm -hmm. when they they they're out in the uh, well land or uh, other scenes on land, it's quite bright. And even mm -hmm. when when the drummer crab, the scenes where you can see the drummer crab, the light uh, changes uh, uh, very much. So it's. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I, I, I'm sure it was on purpose, but for me, it's uh, it's again uh, um, the like the, the the encounter, the meeting of two different worlds, like mm. night and day. So, it's, and at the same time, life on the boat. It's very very like it, it replicates their lives as uh, as mil as soldiers as. Uh, officers as members of a community and this is very very well well played you, you see the man answering one to one another and then the machines answering to man and everything works uh, perfectly there's a scene at the beginning where uh, the well the, the second in command is uh, taken over the, the the wheel and and the captain says, okay, I'll, I'll take over. And he said, oh, uh, to the right or to the left, I, I can't remember. And, and, and by the end, the second in command says, oh, um, I'm sorry, captain, thank you. And the captain replies, uh, there's no uh, excuses or no thank yous. It's our privilege not to say thank you, as our privilege as officer, not to say mm -hmm. thank you or excuse to, to one another so it's brilliant yeah. yeah yeah never ask forgiveness for you taking command it's uh, exactly. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's beautiful yeah uh i'm just gonna read a super chat here uh ah, okay. christian yeah. sends five dollars uh and he says interesting guest and movie choice the movie is really hard to obtain in english but the conversation makes me want to keep trying yeah it is it is available so uh you can definitely find it and also stan it, sends five dollars and kiaran sends 25 dollars. thank you so much guys uh thank you so much for that do you have any final we have about uh, 10 minutes left or so do you have a do you have any any final thoughts or anything else you want to say before we wrap this up well uh Frody, i think well i hope that uh everyone watching us that did that haven't watched the film will do so and mm -hmm. I think this film is a good, a great film to start uh, watching other Pierre Chandorfe's uh, films, which are brilliant. And, and to know, well, this is, I think, one of the, the, uh, the goals of the, the Cameron Film Festival is watching different films from different countries, from different eras. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and knowing cinema uh, different differently and watching it through our eyes mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, our friends will understand me uh, and and I think after watching this film and others by Shandorfer, mm -hmm. people will watch uh, Apocalypse Now and other films very very differently I'm sure and, absolutely and of course Prodi, I hope you you you'll invite me next next year, and uh, absolutely, uh, I'll bring a, a Portuguese film, of course, because yeah, so many people told me that why didn't you pick up a Portuguese film? Well, next time, 
it's, it's next easy. time next <laughs> absolutely time invite me i'll do that of um, course but okay and i'm looking forward to so many films I, I I saw on the schedule this year. So, uh, and we have uh, how many days till the festival? Come on, Freddy! It's, it's we still have a many, 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 yeah. many days and many episodes to go. Tomorrow, uh, I can say to the viewers: tomorrow we have uh, the Longhouse, which is a podcast on YouTube. They are this is t two guys. Uh, they're going to join us to talk about Amadeus from 1984, which oh, is also yeah. a brilliant, brilliant uh, film. film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that film. So uh, if you're watching, you can go to the CameronFilmFestival.com to find the schedule and you'll find out. It'll be, well, we'll start one hour later tomorrow. So tomorrow uh, we're going to talk about Amadeus. So this has been great, Duarte. Thank you so much for joining okay. us. Do you have Ready? any, the final thing, do you, do you have any, any, links or any upcoming projects or anything you want to tell the viewers about anything you want to plug uh well i i'm actually i'm writing for several magazines but i now uh, i started a, a podcast of course it's in portuguese mm. i have a, i have only one episode in italian because i uh, i was in italy recently and i i was with uh my good friend adriano shanka and he wrote a brilliant, brilliant, it's not because he's my friend, it's a brilliant, brilliant book called Europe Against the West. And it's, mm -hmm. I think, a, a book that I hope, I know, he told me that it will be translated to French. He asked mm -hmm. me to translate it to Portuguese. I hope it will be translated to English because it's our uh, lingua franca, as it's all, uh, so, 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 uh, everyone can read it and it's um a book uh clarifying the position that we as europeans should uh stand in today's i will conflicts plural because uh mm -hmm. it's not uh only one and you we of course our place our position is europe it's not the west the western values it's not uh Eurasia, where some people think uh, no one will come to save us. No. Uh, so the future <laughs> of Europe uh, will be will have to be done by us Europeans. So it's, but it's a um, it's a, a small book. It's but a brilliant book. Uh, and I did. Um, small interview with him in italian so if you can understand italian just please check uh, my youtube channel and you can listen to it so i'll hope in the uh, in the future i'll have some well i'm hoping to uh, to upload this um talk also but in the future i hope to to upload some content in well in French, in English, in Spanish, uh, well, at least in the ling in the languages I speak. So, mm -hmm. okay, uh, very good. Brody, uh, I hope to see you in Lisbon soon. I hope so too. I, I was just looking at looking out your vin window in the background, and I'm I'm envious because I can see how warm and nice it is, and it's really getting cold in Northern Europe. We're getting snow and everything, yeah. so I'm very well, envious. I, I, I wish I could be in Portugal now. I have to say, <laughs> it's quite rainy now, but well, it, well, we need it also. So yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been excellent. Uh, I want to thank also uh, every everyone who's been watching, everyone who's been active in the chat. Of course, everyone who sent donations, making it work out financially with this sh show as well. If you want to support us, you can go to the website, go to the donate page, and of course, I want to remind you again that the CameronFilmFestival.com is the website, and that's where you'll find the schedule. And tomorrow we'll be back with The Longhouse, and we're going to talk about Amadeus from 1984. So I want to thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Good night.